So, I had uh, introduced the concept of uh, angular momentum and uh, even for a single particle this is a useful concept together with uh, linear momentum and energy angular momentum is another physical quantity which is very very useful in dynamics. How do we define that? We define angular momentum L of a particle of a particle and about an origin these things are important about a chosen point which we call origin and the definition is this L is equal to R cross P. What does that mean? You have an excess system, you have an origin, you have the particle somewhere here and then the particle may be moving in some direction, its mass is m. At that instant, what is the position of the particle as seen from this origin, from this frame of reference? that is known as r vector r this r vector and uh, p is the linear momentum the mass of the particle times this velocity so, that is it. And then uh, similarly we define torque similarly we define torque this also on a particle. So, these uh, adjectives are important of a force we call torque of a force and force is acting on some particle and once again about the origin about the origin. So, this is important and then we say that torque is R cross F. This R is same as this R this is the position vector of the particle on which this force is acting and this position vector is taken from the same origin and then we call this torque about that point and then uh, you have a very simple relation that torque is equal to dl dt. dl dt is simple L you know so dl dt if you do it will be differentiation of the first function cross the second function at such and then first function at such and differentiation of this second vector. Now, it is important that the order is not changed r first p next r first p next r first p next so, this order should not change. And then one sees that uh, this is 0, this is 0 y, this is parallel to velocity, this is velocity itself, this is 0 and this is force, this is force resultant force dp dt and therefore, this is equal to tau, simple. Now, let me take a very common example, simple example, a particle freely falling under gravity. So, it is dropped a particle is dropped and then it uh, falls. So, it falls in a vertical line and then it reaches ground it reaches ground. So, it is dropped from here and we can take the origin right here and then x axis y axis and z axis and if this time is t equal to 0 at certain time t it will be here. So, at this is at time t and this distance is half g t square. So, if I ask what is the angular momentum of this particle at time t? So, L at time t this is r cross p. Now, what is r vector? Here is the origin. So, this is our r vector, this is our position vector of the particle at time t and uh, what is the linear momentum it is mass times velocity mass times velocity and the two are in the same direction r vector and this uh, p vector are in the same direction and therefore, this is 0 
angular momentum remains zero it moves on this straight line and uh, torque torque at time t r cross f that also you can work out what is the force the force is mg the force is f is mg which direction vertically downward so once again r and f are parallel to each other and therefore it is zero so obviously torque is dl dt l is zero all the time torque is zero all the time so torque is dl dt is obviously correct if you take your origin here same story same story this is r vector this is r vector then and this is f vector and this is p vector so same story what if i take the origin somewhere here let us say this is a point o and this is point a and this is point p and my origin is here now what is the angular momentum is it zero the angular momentum l is r cross p and r vector is from the origin to the particle so this is r vector so this is r vector so op op cross product with p vector mass times velocity what is velocity gt if i call this uh, let us say this x axis this is y axis then it is velocity is gt in minus k cap direction minus j cap direction right velocity is g into t v equal to u plus gt u is 0 and therefore it is mgt mass times velocity and then the direction of the velocity is in minus j cap direction and if I work it out this O p vector is O a vector plus A p vector. So, it is O a vector and plus A p vector and cross m g t and then minus j cap O a this is x direction. So, we will let us take origin here and this is our x direction this is our y direction and the z direction is here. So, this was earlier all right so this is origin this is the op vector and which is which i am writing oa plus ap oa is this distance this distance is some distance oa so this is oa times an i cap i cap plus ap 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 so it is ap it is ap and times this uh, what j vector and cross m g t minus j cap. So, j cap cross j cap is 0, but i cap cross j cap is not 0, it is k cap. So, this is O a multiplied by m g t and then minus and i cap cross j cap is k cap all right o a is fixed o a is fixed the particle falls like this so all the time o a is fixed so o a has a magnitude depends where you have chosen the origin and then m g t in minus k cap direction and k cap remember is now perpendicular to the blackboard so, the particle is falling along this uh, uh, parallel to this y axis, this particle is falling parallel to the y axis, but its angular momentum is in uh, z direction, negative z direction. If this is x, this is y, z is coming towards us and minus k cap means it is going into the board. So, that is L. What is torque? What is torque? torque is r cross f and r is uh, r is op vector so op cross f f is mg in the downward direction so mg times minus j cap so minus j cap 
look at this expression for L and uh, this expression for torque. So, what is the difference? OP cross MGT minus J cap, OP cross Mg minus J cap. Only this T is not there, otherwise everything is there. So, now if you do this DL dt, here is DL, this is D, this, here is L, this is L and I am doing DL dt, differentiate this with respect to time, OP is a fixed vector, no OP is not fixed vector, OA plus AP, you can write it like that. So, your DL dt if you take from here, OA is fixed, correct, OA is fixed. So, this is OA and then mg is fixed and differentiate with respect to time. So, it is 1. So, it is minus k cap. So, OA into mg and then differentiated here minus k cap and uh, what is this? This also you can work out. This is OA plus AP and then cross mg and minus j cap and once again AP is parallel to this y axis. So, this part will go away and what you will have is this OA and then mg here, m into g here, OA here and this OA is in x direction. So, x i cap and j cap is k cap, so minus k cap, simple. Same as this, same as this torque is same as this dl dt. So, even for a particle which is falling vertically under gravity, if the origin is chosen in, in a certain way, you do have angular momentum, you do have torque and then the rate of change of angular momentum is equal to torque, that equation is valid. So, my next uh, example is from central forces and we will be talking at length about the central forces here to introduce this idea of uh, angular momentum and its use. So, we call it central force because you have a force center. So, you have a point and the particle is uh, can be anywhere and then the force on the particle is always along the line joining the particle from this fixed point that we call force center or center of force. So, you have a fixed point the particle can go anywhere in the whole space, but wherever it is you join the origin with that position of the particle the force on the particle will be along that line either towards the center or away from the center. And then the magnitude of the force depends only on this distance from this uh, fixed point. If that happens we call that force as a central force. So, I can write for central force F at R is equal to some function of R without vector. Okay? Here R is with vector, here R is without vector and then R cap. What is R cap? Just tell. First, let us see what is this uh, R vector and what is this R. R vector is as usual position vector of the particle at time t. So, at time t the particle is somewhere and I join the origin and the particle and that vector is this R vector force on the particle when it is at that position that is our left hand side. Okay. Force on the particle when the particle is at this position, at this position. So, that is the left hand side and what is the right hand side? It is the distance of the particle at that instant from the origin. Here is the particle, here is the origin and this is the distance and the distance is r and this direction is the direction of the force. Okay. It need not be in general, it need not be in this direction, but for a central force it has to be in this direction. This r cap vector is along this uh, line 
and in the increasing r direction unit vector along the direction of this position vector this is known as r cap. So, this f r if it is positive then the force is away from the center of force if this f r is negative then the force is towards the center attractive or repulsive. So, we have uh, enough examples uh, for such central forces at least approximately our planetary system sun and the planets. So, sun attracts the particle the planet wherever it is. So, the force is uh, in the direction of that uh, sun that means opposite to the position vector and the magnitude depends only on the distance between the sun and the planet right. The sun is given the planet is given. So, m 1 m 2 is there capital G is there. So, it is only by r square it depends only on r not on the direction not on the direction. So, or let us say Bohr's model of atom you have a proton and you have an electron and then in that model the electron is supposed to go in some circular path. So, all the time the force on the electron is towards that proton which is taken as the origin and uh, the, mag the force depends on the distance only q 1 q 2 by 4 pi epsilon naught r square. So, you have so many examples. Okay. So, let us uh, try to study this. Now, suppose this particle is acted upon by this uh, central force and we ask what is the angular momentum of the particle? How do I write the angular momentum of the particle? So, first let us take some axis and in this process I will be telling you more about another coordinate system in two dimensions which is known as plane polar coordinates. So, I have x axis and y axis and then the particle is somewhere and if I join the position of particle from the origin this vector is the position vector r and the unit vector along this position vector is known as r cap. And then this angle I can call theta and uh, if you do not increase the distance, but turn it so that this theta increases. So, in the direction in which r is not changing, but theta is increasing that means perpendicular to this. This direction is known as theta cap direction. So, if I take the particle in this direction, this theta will increase. If I take it infinitesimally small distance here, this theta will become theta plus d theta, but r will remain the same same means if it is infinitesimal small ok. There is no component of that displacement in the r direction and therefore, for that infinitesimally small displacement we will take that r is constant only theta is changing. This is r cap this is theta cap and if I drop a perpendicular here this is x and this is y to get the position I can write what is x and what is y. I can also write what is r and what is theta. If someone says that all right it is uh, it is at a distance of r from the origin and this line makes angle theta with the x axis that also tells me that uh, ok the particle is here provided the particle remains in this x y plane. If it is in the x y plane yes give me r give me theta I know that it is in this plane and I know where the particle is. If uh, I know that it is uh, in x y plane give me x give me y I know that it is in this plane and here is x here is y and this should be the particle. But if it it is it is leaving this x y plane and it moves in a space three dimensional space z is also there then neither this is sufficient nor that is sufficient. Let us come back to our uh, angular momentum. So, angular momentum
of this particle at time t is given by L equal to R vector and cross P vector that is mass times R and cross V and torque and torque. Torque is tau which is dl dt of course and which is r cross f. Now, here is the crucial point r cross f this is vector r and the force is also along that direction r cap. The force is either towards the center or away from the center, but it is on the same line and therefore, when you do this r cross f this is 0 for central force. And if uh, torque is 0 that tells me that this L is constant and remember it is d d t of L vector. So, if that is 0 that means L vector is constant and L vector is constant means what this is constant this is constant L vector is equal to mass times r cross v and this is constant in uh, magnitude as well as in direction and this is a constant vector remember and this v is uh, perpendicular to this v is perpendicular to l that is how the cross product is defined the cross product of two vectors is perpendicular to each of these two vectors so, L is perpendicular to R, L is perpendicular to V. I am interested in the second part. L is perpendicular to V. So, V is perpendicular to L and L is a fixed vector. So, particle does not have any component of velocity along this uh, direction, this L direction. If I call this L direction, if I call this L direction as Z axis. V is always perpendicular to L that means V is, is in x y plane that means V z is 0 no component in z direction. So, any if initially there is no component in z direction and then uh, you cannot pick up any uh, there any, any magnitude of that it has to remain in x y plane. So, the way you start how you start in this direction or that direction or that direction that will decide finally, the plane of motion and the particle must move in a plane. Okay. So, does not matter what this function is 1 by r square 1 by r 1 by r cube whatever alright. The motion of the particle is in a plane all central force motion is cope is coplanar in one single plane it remains and therefore we can use this right therefore we can use this and uh, let me go little ahead of this what is this r cap in terms of i cap and j cap remember this r cap and theta cap they depend on where this point is if the point is here r cap is, the, is in this direction theta cap is in that direction these are not constant vectors they depend on the position of the particle i cap j cap are constant x axis is fixed y axis is fixed particle is moving i cap j cap are constant vectors. So, I can write this uh, r cap as cos theta i cap and plus sin theta j cap verify verify this angle is theta this angle is theta and so this is unit vector cos theta this component and sin theta that component and uh, theta cap if you write theta cap if you write so it has a one component this side one component that side so minus sin theta i cap and plus cos theta j cap that is theta cap now very interesting what is dr cap dt and first what are, what does this mean dr cap dt the particle is here 
you have a r cap direction this is r cap then in a time dt the point will goes from here to somewhere else let us say here of course in time dt so it is infinitesimal displacement and now r cap is this so how much is the change in r cap this vector and minus that vector that is change in r cap and therefore i divide by dt and i get this dr dt okay so here is r these are fixed vectors i cap j cap theta can vary theta is variable theta can change as the particle moves so this is minus sin theta and then d theta dt and uh, plus cos theta and then d theta dt here is j cap here is i cap and this is minus sin theta i cap plus cos theta j cap and theta dot and when i write dot it is ddt ddt of theta and this is theta cap this is theta cap theta dot it is theta dot theta cap so dr cap dt is theta dot and then theta cap right so once again let us uh, write this uh, l vector you can write what is v vector what is first r vector r vector is r r cap can you see this can you see this r vector is r that is the magnitude and the direction is r cap so r vector is this magnitude r r cap so what is dr dt dr dt this is the velocity of the particle this is the velocity of the particle dr dt r vector here so differentiate this keep this as constant then keep this as constant differentiate this and that is equal to r dot r cap then plus r times dr dt dr dt is right here so it is r and then theta dot and then theta cap so the r component is r dot and the theta component is r theta dot you can write it like this and you can write an expression for this uh, l l which is m times r vector cross v vector and r vector is r r cap and then cross v vector is here v vector is here r dot r cap plus r theta dot theta cap r cap cross r cap is zero so it is m into this r into this r and then theta dot r cap cross theta cap come back here here is r cap and here is theta cap so what is r cap cross theta cap this is a unit vector in this uh, uh, perpendicular direction and that is z direction so this is k vector unit vector k k cap so this is k cap okay so we have already shown that the whole motion is in xy plane and uh, angular momentum is taken in the z direction so that is that comes out in z direction very good very nice and it is fixed direction is fixed magnitude is also fixed l vector is a constant vector and here is the magnitude so l is equal to m into r square into theta dot and this is constant means r square into theta dot is constant this particle may go somewhere in this uh, plane r is changing theta is changing theta dot is changing but r square theta dot must remain constant so we'll take it from here we will talk uh, much more about central forces